you in tune and informed. Al Ansar. Welcome back to How to Make It in South Africa, only on Radio Al Ansar 90.4 FM. I'm your host, Arif Sayyid, with my co host, Wasim Seder. Please, listeners, call us in studio on 031 208 4564. Today in the marketplace, we focus on the 10th World Islamic Economic Forum that was recently held in Dubai. We welcome Ibrahim Patel. In, we, excuse me. We welcome Ibrahim Patel, international advisor to the World Economic World Islamic Economic Forum and chairman of the World Islamic Economic Forum Young Leaders Network. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam, Arif and Wasim, and uh, salamu alaikum to all your listeners. How are you doing today, uh, Ibrahim? Alhamdulillah. So tell us, you recently went to Dubai. What was it all about? Well, as you point out, it was uh, the 10th World Islamic Economic Forum that took place in Dubai. Um, It was the first time that it has taken place in the Middle East. And uh, effectively, the World Islamic Economic Forum is an organization based in Malaysia that looks at how we can use the medium of business to build bridges between the global Muslim Ummah on the one hand and between the global Muslim Ummah and the rest of the world on the other hand. So how can we use the medium of business, which everybody understands, and how we can utilize that business to build relationships across the globe uh, and to strengthen the relationship between the Ummah itself. Tell us about this year's event. Well, this year's event was uh, quite unique. Uh, we attracted 3,115 delegates from across the globe, seven heads of state, and 22 ministers from different countries. And the exciting part about this event, being in the 10th year, is that it's actually evolved to become a more interactive forum. So for the first time this year, we introduced the concept of master classes and idea pads, where people who had business ideas from different parts of the world were able to come and pitch those ideas to groups of investors and uh, to interested parties. So it gave uh, exposure to, to young entrepreneurs, to creative talents, to people that were starting up businesses, and as well as to established businesses on how do they expose their product and their services to people from all parts of the world. I feel I definitely should have been there. It sounds like such an amazing forum to, to, to be at. I'm sure you had an amazing time. What was the theme uh, of this year's event and what key issues were discussed? Well, this year's uh, theme was innovative partnerships or partnerships through innovation and technology. And the idea behind this was how can people who have different talents, who have different ideas, who have uh, different skills in different parts of the world, benefit each other in a partnership, in innovative partnerships that ultimately will benefit the global Muslim Ummah. Now, what we are saying is that we can use business as a tool to uplift Muslim communities in every part of the world, to uplift communities that are around us as well. The idea behind this innovative partnership theme this year was that there are people that have a skill in Islamic finance, for instance, and how can we utilize Islamic finance in developing small businesses, or how can we use wakaf and zakat, not just for poverty alleviation, but also for social development. So this was the idea of taking the skill sets that exist within the global ummah, the ideas that we have within the Islamic world, and utilize those as innovative partnerships to unlock a better future for all of us. So the, the, some of the ideas that came about were across the globe, there are a number of assets, you know, there's almost... Uh, close on to $800 billion of assets that are lying in Wakaf. Now, if we understand the concept of Wakaf, it's a trust. Like all our masjids and madrasas and various other uh, entities are in these trusts and have been donated for the, for, for the benefit of the community. Unfortunately, what has happened is in other parts of the world, these assets are not utilized properly because there is no skill that has been used in them. There is no one managing them properly. And we are saying... How can we unlock the value of those assets, that $800 billion of work of assets that exist across the globe, to become a more powerful medium for upliftment and development of our Muslim Ummah? So it's ideas like that. And how can we revitalize a lot of the great concepts that we had in Islam in previous years? How can we revitalize those over there to make ourselves a more positive future? Well, Wasim wants to try to convince you for a trip. <laughs> 
Um, tell us, um, what are the key differences um, from previous forums compared to this one? Well, as I pointed out earlier, the key difference in this particular one was uh, you know, the, the concept of the idea pad where people could come and actually pitch business ideas. So we had, and, and just, just to make the important point is that the World Islamic Economic Forum is not confined to Muslim delegates or Muslim businesses. So we have, uh, for instance, this year, we had the Japanese that were coming to pitch uh, at the forum an idea that they have in education. We had the Koreans trying to pitch ideas that they had in different mediums in, in animation. So it's companies from across the globe that were coming there with ideas that they had. A group in the UK, a group of young men uh, and women in the UK had come up with this brilliant social application which they pitched to the audience in order to win investors to invest in their company. They're a startup company. They needed to get in something like about a million pounds. And they were trying to pitch uh, to groups of investors to get uh, that funding to, to, to run, uh, to extend their business. And it, it's, it's platforms like this that we, that we are saying that can be utilized where you have a, ca- a captive audience, where you have CEOs of top companies, you have some of the best brains in the Muslim Ummah that are at this particular forum or at the, uh, attending the conference who can pick up on these ideas and run with them. So the, the key uh, difference between past uh, forums was the introduction of the idea plan. The second one was the matchmaking sessions, which we also put together for the first time, where businesses could uh, come in and talk about uh, their particular business, existing businesses, not looking for investors, but looking to extend relationships. So it was a matchmaking between buyers and sellers, between people that were looking for new opportunities and people that had existing business, to put them together to see that they create, as we say, innovative partnerships and a strengthening of the global market. Um, Ibrahim, you mentioned uh, the idea pitching thing. You know, I follow uh, entrepreneurship a, a lot uh, in recent times, and I see that this whole um, pitching to investors, thing, it, it's something that's really big at the moment. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Dragon's Den, the show. Um, you know, I, I I love the idea of pitching. You just get like someone, a small startup guy, and then he, he has an opportunity to pitch to to potential investors. Uh, what about having something like that accessible to 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 our Muslims like locally? I mean, we we not not a lot of people know about this about about the whole pitching thing, and I see it's something that's used a lot lately, and there's TV shows about it, and it's a great opportunity for for some young startup guy with a great idea to to potentially take that idea further. What, 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 uh, do, you, do you have any opinion on that? I, I think it's a brilliant idea. Why not? Let's do that here in South Africa. Uh, there are any number of, of young people that have these brilliant ideas, and, and we should probably set up a, a, a dragon's den here in Durban or, or locally as well. I well, would support that. I think uh, I, we do have a local idea. one. It actually started uh, quite recently. Uh, I think it's running for about uh, one month now. But I think that the thing is like not, not many people know about it. So and you you do have the businessmen out there, and you get the guys with their ideas. I think it, it it's definitely something that that we should look into. Well, let, let me just share a little uh, uh, experience in, in terms of pitching. Lots of people like to go to these pitches because they think it's quite easy to get investors to buy into the ideas. Quite often, they don't research their business idea themselves properly. So when they go into back to Dragons Den, for instance or whichever one of these pitching sessions they are, they just pitch an idea which hasn't been thought out properly, and investors lose interest very quickly. Most investors, in a, in, because you have a very short space of time, you have five minutes in which to get people interested in your idea, you must be able to sell them the business concept, you must be able to show them the bottom line, you must be able to show them where the profit is going to be and where the growth is going to be. And if you can do that in that five minutes of, of time, then you have people that will be interested. If you don't do it, people walk away from you and you'll never hear from investors again. Yeah, definitely. I think they call it an elevator pitch. Am I correct? That is, that's true. Yeah. Okay, um, another question. Does anything concrete come out of the forum? Stuff that we can really take mm-hmm. with, you know, like, like serious stuff that like 100% concrete that we can take and run with in the future? Well, there, there, there's various idea, parts of it that have come out, one of which is a formulation of, for the first time, which is a, a worker working task team, which has been formed by various experts from across the globe that will be coming up with concepts of how to unlock worker property and how these can be financed as well in order to 
grow those particular properties and to unlock the, the true value in them. The second part of it has been uh, the, the concept of cross-border education through technology, where people are now starting to develop uh, applications that will allow for education without uh, the, the hindrance of borders or the hindrance of physical schools, and the collaboration between various countries to develop the, the, the education model. So we are going to see more technology coming into the education sphere. We're going to be seeing more innovative models in how to bring education through to, and especially for here in, in, in places like South Africa, where we have a dire need for education, especially in the rural areas, how do we get education out into the rural areas or to the disadvantaged areas without having the physical constraint of building schools or using lots of money to, to, to input into the system? And, and you're going to see more of that coming about through these technological uh, partnerships that are taking place. Uh, the, the, the third one is actually um, uh, the, the concept of now using Islamic finance. Many of us are aware of Islamic finance when we want to buy a car or we want to buy a house. Then the concept now is how can we utilize Islamic finance for developing small and medium businesses, for developing entrepreneurship, and for uh, growing those entrepreneurs and funding those entrepreneurs and small businesses. So a number of, of these key initiatives have come out of this year's uh, particular forum, and we're going to see more and more um, discussions around those particular ones. Yeah, sounds fantastic. Ibrahim, how, how much is the halal industry's worth globally? Do you have a rough idea? Well, it depends on, de- depends on who you're talking to and how you're, you're couching the question. So uh, in, in my research, the halal industry is worth $3 trillion per annum. And that includes the about $1.2 trillion that is in Islamic finance assets. So when we talk about Islamic finance assets, we're talking about the unit trusts, about property, about sukuks, about Islamic funds, musharakas and mudarabas, all of those Islamic assets uh, are worth about $1.2 trillion. US dollars. Um, $850 billion comes out of the halal tourism. About $550 billion is out of halal foods. You, the, about $187 billion is in clothing. And then you have this new concept that is now coming about, which is halal cosmetics and health care. And that's worth close to about $300 billion. And the entire industry is growing at about 20% per annum. Now, it's become the key focus of, of businesses across the world, not because it's Islamic, not because they're buying into the concept of Islamic, but because they're seeing the economic opportunity. You have close to 2 billion consumers who have a uh, roughly about 57% of the world's uh, GDP spend. And if you're talking about that kind of power, that kind of consumer buying power, then it's a serious market. Now, most of us, we look at South Africa and we say, I want to produce, uh, let's say, a uh, halal sweet. A uh, halal sweet, and I'm going to sell it in South Africa. Your market in South Africa is only 2 million consumers. But if you look outside of South Africa, and at the neighboring countries, that brings about another about 70 million consumers. So from 2 million, you've gone into 70 million consumers. If you go slightly north of our borders into Central Africa, that adds another 100 million customers. If you go into the rest of Africa, you've got close on to 450 million customers. Now imagine someone producing in South Africa a suite and thinking about a market that's only 2 million consumers, whereas we should be thinking about a market that's worth 400 million consumers. If we start thinking about our businesses in that particular way and how we can harness our, ourselves or position ourselves within the halal industry, then all of a sudden we see our businesses growing. We see the extension of small businesses. We see small producers in different parts of the country collaborating with each other and building a huge industry. And ultimately, the aim of this of here is how do we show the positive side of Islam, that we can use the global halal industry, which everyone is now interested in because they see it as a market. You'd be surprised to, to learn that Nestle, the multinational company based in Switzerland, is the largest producer of halal food goods in the world. They're not a Muslim company. They're not Islamically inclined, but they're doing it because they see the market and they see the market opportunity. And if we start tapping into that, all of a sudden, we've extended business, we've become more... Um, uh, powerful, we've become um, uh, people that, you know, a group of people that all, all of a sudden we have this economic might, and then we can start shifting and shaping uh, decisions across the globe. I think that uh, the figures you just told us is just mind blowing. I think we should have our, our own local version of an Islamic economic forum here in South Africa. Do you think that's a good idea, Ibrahim? Yes, I think it's an excellent idea. Um, that, you know, that, that we 
have these kind of discussions, but we start talking with each other. The, uh, the, the, the reality of our situation is that many of us have these brilliant ideas. Many of us have these brilliant concepts. Many of us have these wonderful thoughts. And many of us have these visions. But unfortunately, we're not talking with each other. We, we, we are operating in silence. And if we were talking with each other, I'm sure that collectively we'll become far better than what we are today. Yeah, uh, I think if we, if we do, we can change the name of the show from How to Make It in South Africa to How to Make It in the Halal World. <laughs> of course. Uh, well, Jazakla well, Khair... It's, 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 it's young people like yourselves uh, who have the energy, who have the, the foresight, and who have the vision to make a difference. And if we can harness that potential, if we can harness that kind of energy, I'm certain that we have a far brighter future ahead of us. On that note, Jazakallah Khair Ibrahim, we will definitely keep the conversation going off air because uh, the ideas that you've just told us about is simply inspirational. Jazakallah so much. Shukran for having me on your show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. That was Ibrahim Patel, International Advisor and Chairman of Young Leaders Network for the World, for the world Islamic Economic Forum. High Tech is up next. Stay tuned. From Durban to the world, Radio Al Ansar.